I bought the cheapest watch I could find in the shop. I mean, super cheap. To create a really high-end watch advertising image. And this is the result. I'm gonna show you exactly how I created this image. $5 watch shot. I'm going to show you folks exactly how I lit it. Now you might look at it and think that looks a little bit complicated, but actually I've only used two lights. That's it. Two lights. I'm going to show you exactly how. Before we get started, I want you guys to think of this as not a tutorial, but more of an idea, more of ideas of how you can implement these techniques in your product shots. So the idea all starts with a drone. I tend to pick up the iPad Pro and start just sketching out a couple of ideas and try and working out kind of what materials I'm going to use what light I'm going to use, where the light's going to fall, and kind of visualize the final image. And that really is a helpful way of kind of trying to visualize the end result. And I would highly encourage anybody to just sit there and just jot those ideas down because it really helps you stick to the plan and keeps that focus on the final image. So the next step, obviously select the stones, the materials in particular. Now I've already bought the watch, nice brown strap watch, very cheap, around about $5, maybe a little bit less actually. And um, so the next step is to grab some plum slate. Now looking enough, of that sitting about in my garden pot. So I grabbed some of that because it's got nice textures, nice ripples, nice shades of grey. So I thought that would look really nice in the image. So that's what we're going to be using. Now to form that shape like you see in the image, I've simply just used a hot glue gun and glued all the plum slates together to create a form that I thought looked really pleasing to my eye. Then the next step is I need to clamp that to a light stand. How do I do that? I've used some acrylic rods, clear acrylic rods. Now, if you want to know exactly all the gear that I'm using in this video, all the links will be in the description below. They are affiliate links, I've got to tell you that. So if you want to use them, it doesn't cost you guys anything, but I do get a little bit of a kickback if you do use them, which is helpful to the channel. So I just need to make you guys aware of that. But all the links will be in the description below. So the clear acrylic rods, I'm using them, one, because obviously they're clear, so if any light needs to pass through, if I'm lighting the water, which I will be at some point, the light will pass through that and obviously light the water. And obviously they're also easier to remove in Photoshop. Obviously I'm gonna to have to remove them in Photoshop, I'll have to paint them out. So that's why I'm using these acrylic rods. So the next step is I need to fix the watch to plum slate. But before I get around to actually fixing it to the plum slate, I need to make sure that strap is solid and it's not bendy because obviously I've got to press it down. I need to keep that form, the circle form, so as if it's around the wrist, so you're going to see the top and the bottom of the strap. How am I going to do this? Simply cutting a little bit of plastic and creating like a wristband, a hard wristband, taping it together, putting that inside the watch, making sure it's nice and tight. Now you can see the watch is ready to stick to the plumb slate. I'm going to be using some blue tack. I had initially thought about gluing it with a hot glue gun, but if I needed to make any slight adjustments, once that glue sets, it sets. So blue tack is definitely the way to go. So now I have the set set. It's time to bring in the lights. And for my main lights, I'm going to be using the Pixapro City 600. Now I'm using that as my main light because it has an LED modeling lamp on it, which is really handy for this type of situation. I'm going to be able to see where that light is going to fall on the watch. Now I'm going to be shooting through a scrim. Like I said before, all the links will be in the description below. So I've actually made this scrim from scratch, super easy to make, and I'd highly recommend anybody who wants to get into product photography is create your own scrims because you really cannot recreate that graduated light from a softbox. You just can't because it's a solid square or solid octagonal or solid ball of light, and you won't get that graduation that you'll get with a scrim. So by simply using a roll of tracing paper, I think that's about 20 meters long by one meter wide, this tracing paper, so it's going to last us a long time. I'm able to make the scrim exactly the size I want it. And that's another advantage of using and making your own scrims is that you can make them to whatever size you want. Now I'm making this scrim the size of my shooting space. And I'm using the ceiling, my DIY ceiling rig, which I've made a couple of years back. I'll put a link up here if you haven't seen that. You can go and check that out, which is now ideally suited for shooting with scrims. I can suspend them from the ceiling and adjust the height of them. I can also hang lights from them, which is really handy if you're shooting in a small space. So yeah, check that out. Now you see from the video, I've got no modifier on the light. I'm shooting that bare because obviously we just want that big ball of light on there. And obviously as the light gets further away, it's obviously going to reduce the power, which kind of creates that graduation of light across that screen, which kind of reflects on your subject or on the product that you're shooting. And that kind of gives that nice graduation of light coming around the subject. So the City 600 sitting above the scrim and I'm able to move that light around until I get the light falling exactly where I want 
on the watch and this is a great way of doing it like I said before I'm using that as the main light because it's got the modeling lamp on and I can visually see where the light's going to be falling now obviously if you guys don't have this type of lighting if you have speed lights you can recreate the speed lights but it's just going to be a little bit more difficult obviously using these with the modern lamps is a lot easier so just bear that in mind. So now I have that light locked into position, I can start photographing the watch. Now obviously I'm lighting from above, so I need a light source from below. So I'm gonna be simply using some silver mirrored reflective cord and I'm gonna bounce that light back up into the watch. Now obviously I'm not gonna get this shot all in one take. It's gonna take a few takes, which I'm gonna to have to combine in Photoshop. And that's okay, obviously shooting this kind of small space, there's nothing I can do about that. That's one of the limitations of shooting in a small space. So that, and that is one of the workarounds of how to get around shooting in a small space. So bear that in mind too. So now I've got the watch lit exactly how I want it. I'm looking at the plum seat and it's looking a little bit dull. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the Pika 200 and I'm gonna have that in the Pixar Pro Optical Snoot and I'm going to add the scatter gel. Now what that's going to do is just scatter some light over the plum slate and just add that little bit more interest to the image. And that's going to work great. Now onto the background. Again, I'm going to be using the Pika 200 with the optical snoot, but this time I'm going to insert the circle gobo, which is going to give me a really nice, sharp, defined ball of light right behind the subject. Now, again, if you don't have the optical snoot, you can just use a normal suit, you can make your own, but it's going to be a lot more difficult to get that really defined edge around that ball of light. And I wanted a specific, really hard ball of light around the watch. So this was a great tool to use for that. So now I have all of the elements of the watch, the background and the plum slate lit. It's now time to bring in the water and get my feet wet. To scare me out, folks, obviously I'm shooting in my own space, so I'm able to get water on the floor. If you're not, you're gonna have to make sure you put some sort of plastic covering down so you don't get the water everywhere. I've got some buckets catching the water, but if you're, say, shooting in your bedroom or your living room, take precaution and make sure you get everything covered. Now, I have actually got the Pika 200 for the background light that's covered with a plastic bag, so any water falling on there, it's not gonna affect that. So now, for this to work really well, you've got to try and get like a, a sheet of water. It's gotta be like a full, a full sheet of water which falls because when it just falls individually it doesn't the light doesn't reflect off and it just looks really terrible really bland you've really got to try and get a sheet of water now it's a bit of a technique to try and do this it took me about 25 shots just to get that one and i was super lucky 25 shots i was super happy with the result but to get that one sheet of water coming down behind the watch and kind of get it centered in the watch as well took some doing but it's achievable you've just got to keep going keep taking the shots keep going keep taking the shots now, just let you know, I am firing the camera remotely with the trigger, which is super easy when you're working by yourself. So obviously I'm pouring the water and I'm firing the camera at the same time. So timing is everything. So the next step is to get those lovely splashes coming as if it's coming out through the rocks at the bottom. Now it's simply a case of obviously pouring the bottle of water over until I get the desired look I want. So now I have all of the elements of the images that I want. It's a case of just simply combining those in Photoshop, masking out the bits I want, brushing in the bits I do want, and then simply running it through Topaz Labs, adding a little bit of sharpening, contrast, a little bit of blue tone, and a little bit of saturation. And this is the final result. Now I was super happy with the result. I thought that turned out really well, especially just using two lights, especially in a confined space as well. So it's very, very doable, guys. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Flick the notification bell so you can see more videos like this posted further down the line, which there will be. I'll see you folks in the next one. See you then.